Hey, so um, thanks for uh, stopping by today. I've had a lot of people, um, especially our clients with small businesses and vacation rental businesses asking about, you know, what are these government programs? Um, let me just start by saying, because I'm recording this and it could be shared, my name is Cindy Hayden. I am a broker associate with Future Home Realty and a member of the San Barca Sunsets team serving the Tampa Bay real estate area. I also currently serve as president of the Pinellas Realtor Organization. And so I reached out and asked the uh, CEO of our organization, David Bennett, if he would spend some time uh, sharing with us what he's learned because he has really been pouring into this since it came out and continues to keep a pulse on it. Uh, for our uh, small business owners, uh, we have over 10,000 members and each of them are uh, some kind of small business owner themselves. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to David and then we'll go through from there. And uh, at the end, we'll ask questions. And um, if you want to put something in the chat in between with if you have questions or something, then I can make sure we don't lose track of them. And um uh, Again, thank you, David, for taking your time to come share with us what you're learning and help us all navigate this, uh, this new event we're all finding ourselves in. Absolutely, thank you, Cindy. So um, because we have so many independent contractors at the Realtor Organization and, and independent businesses, uh, about 10,000 of them, um, it became kind of our job to kind of pour into this and kind of have an understanding of uh, the programs that are available. And so I've kind of encapsulized the three big programs. Uh, I, don't th I won't go into the unemployment assistance um, unless somebody wants to lay a land on that. Um, it's not really, okay, good, Margaret. Um, not too good of news when it comes to that, but I'll share that when we get there. Um, but um, the, three, the three programs are in front of you and uh, the Economic Injury uh, Disaster Loan, uh, EIDL, um, is that kind of direct payment from the Small Business Administration. And um, it's pretty easy, accessible. The uh, website is there and I'll, I'll pass Cindy these slides and she can send them out to you guys um, so that you can access them easily because they're all links on the slides. Um, pretty easy to access. Um, I understand that the, the three to five day um, to get the money is not quite that short anymore uh, because you got lots of people applying. Uh, but pretty much it's just, um, they are just, as long as you fill out the form appropriately and you don't have a criminal record and you don't have really, 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 really bad credit, they are going to hit the button on this and drop this money into your checking savings account, whatever you post on the website. The crazy part about this is that a government website is asking for your checking account number and your, um, and your uh, routing number. So it's a little scary. Uh, when I went through the process with a small business administration, I was my jaw hit the floor because I thought people aren't going to do this. Just make sure you're on this website um, and make sure that it has a lock in front of it and that it's the .gov website because there are companies that are, if you Google this, there are companies that will do this and pass it along and you will be giving them your personal information, which could be really, really dangerous. So just make sure you're on that covid19relief.sba.gov. Um, pretty simplistic. You fill it out with uh, the information that you have about um, the type of business entity you are, whether it's a sole proprietorship, an independent contractor, whether you're a business, um, and you just tell them all about yourself. There's, there's a set of about 20 questions, and um, it's pretty simplistic. Um, I would encourage you though, I believe it's gonna just be a grant at some point in time, and they're never gonna ask you to say, go back and have the look back period to forgive it. But we don't know that right now. If the coronavirus ends up being a short term thing, I can guarantee you that the government's gonna want these loans repaid. So make sure you can meet the milestone and have your paperwork ready. And the paperwork for, for everything that I'm gonna talk about today, the two, the two programs for SBA, are going to be documentation that you spend the money on the appropriate business expenses. And I say appropriate business expenses, I'll show you a little later, but in under the, um, is everybody seeing my cursor move around or not? No, you might hit the highlight okay. under How more. about this one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, I'm up on a dual screen here. So 
uh, wages, benefits, retirement, local and state taxes, rent, utilities. Um, but I will caution you that they are really, really looking for 75% of the money to be spent on a wage in some fashion. That can be a wage to yourself. If you're an independent contractor or self-employed, make sure you document it. I did a payroll check to myself for 2,500 bucks this month, 3,000 this month, 4,000 this month. Just make sure you document and have copies of the checks, however you pay yourself or take a draw of your company. Um, make sure you can document that so that the loan can be forgiven in the future. And this is an eight week, uh, you're looking at about eight weeks afterwards after the April 10th filing. So if you file tomorrow, uh, eight weeks from now, you need to be able to document that you spent 75% of the two and a half times your monthly payroll on those type of expenses. If you spend 40% of that money on rent and other expenses, utilities, there is a chance that the loans will not be forgiven. So be cautious. And I know that some people in California in other places that high rent areas for businesses, um, they have a problem with this. So um, in Florida, I think a little easier for us to justify, um, but just make sure you can document everything. And then I would, I would print a copy of what you fill out online um, so that you have it for your records. And that's, that's for both programs. So it's a pretty simplistic, um, the EIDL, and uh, they will just wire you the $10,000. Pretty much it on that. Uh, Maybe, very simplistic process. Can we just share a couple things on there that you were able to help me with? Sure. Um, with the EIDL, you're going to need your EIN number, but you're also going to need the date your business was created. That's one of the questions they have. And then... Um, they will ask for what percentage owner you are. So if yes. you're hundred percent or 50% or whatever, and your title, and then if you're not hundred percent, like I, Jack and I are 50, 50. So, so anyway, I needed his information and it asked for the owner's social security number. I went, Oh, you know what? No, I have to take it back. It was the yeah, yeah. So just stick with that. And either, then either, uh, either, or okay. if you're operating under your social security number, then use that. And then you'll need your bank routing and account number. So um, I just wanted to share some of that. Now, one thing you had that I had a quick question, if you know, is when you said you have to spend it in eight weeks, since we don't have the money yet, is it from when you get the money or is it from the date you file when you said that? What's your understanding? Yeah, so right now um, it's, from, it's, from, uh, it's from the date that, that you get the funds deposited. So for those eight week period, um, but just keep records, um, even if you've had to advance yourself some money out of your savings account to pay yourself, just keep track of those records so that you can uh, document a file and get the loan forgiven. Um, Cause I think they're gonna be in a real forgiving mode. Um, there's only 1% interest on this money. So uh, government, it's not making a ton of money on this. So um, the banks are making the money cause they're getting the fee to process the uh, payroll protection programs. So the next level of that is the actual payroll protection programs, PPP as it's called. Uh, it's a small business administration loan um, and it can be obtained through a participating bank. Um, it's best to go to the bank where you have your credit cards or your deposits with uh, because they're gonna service their clients first. And uh, my, my uh, significant other is a banker and um, they already have 500 applications just from their customers alone. So they can't even take businesses, other businesses that aren't their customers. So, um, but if you can't get your bank to, to uh, fulfill the loan, uh, go shop it around, go to someone else with your paperwork uh, if you need to. Um, and, and there's some skinny information about it. And I'm gonna get into a little spreadsheet, but it's two and a half times your average monthly payroll. And payroll means wages, tips, benefits, retirement, uh, state and local taxes, all those things get pulled together to get this average monthly payroll. So those are the, those are the two loan products. And then, um, yes, Margaret wanted me to talk about the pandemic unemployment. Um, there's a lot of money here, $600 per week, which is pretty significant. If you have employees that need this or you know someone, um, I just turn, turn someone on to this uh, program. Unfortunately, the state of Florida is is set up for only giving unemployment benefits to people who are um, W-2 wage earners, not people who are independent contractors and self-employed. 
So until the federal government drops that money in the state of Florida's coffers, state of Florida is not allowed to give this money out to, to those other type of practitioners. Um, that's one problem. The other problem is that um, without being political, um, our, um, our state unemployment system is horrific. And um, they have 580,000 applications right now, and they can only process 80,000 a week. And so I was just on a call with the governor's office and everything. And so they're seven or eight weeks down the road before the next set of people can even get any help. So it's a long period of time from now. So someone who is a bartender or someone that's um, a self-employed individual, they're, they're almost bankrupt by the time they can get this money. So um, if you are, if you've been employed, uh, it's a lot easier for you. If you work for a company that paid that unemployment compensation insurance, a lot easier to get in. Um, but if you're self-employed, get in uh, as soon as the application's available. It's not even yet available. Once it goes up, um, I'll be sure to cycle back to Cindy once it goes up and then she can get the word out to you. Um, Cause you want to get it in because it's, it's a significant payment, uh, 600 bucks a week. I think the average right now is like $274. So it's a big, big deal. Um, and a big deal to people you know in your lives that may, may need it to survive. So those are the three programs that are going on right now that kind of in, are in our space for stimulus. Um, oh, these are for realtor members. So I will bypass this real quick unless someone's on the line that plays in that space. Let me move camera out of here. Okay, so this is a quick um, calculation sheet that I put together and it shows in the highlighted areas where you're going to get some of this information. So if you pay yourself through a 941 as a business, um, you're going to get it from column one line 5C and that's where you're going to get these quarterly wages. I just gave an example of $12,000 a quarter. Um, but if you're a 1099 person, so you get your wages from uh, 1099, you're an independent contractor and you do marketing services for 10 firms every year, you're going to take all your 19, 2019 1099s, add them together, and then you're going to put those numbers, um, you can just put that, plug that number in right here, you don't need to break it up quarterly. Um, or if you're just gonna rely on your Schedule C from 2019, you can just plug that number from your Schedule C. And they're looking at the whole year of 2019. So in this particular example, um, I'm a practitioner, I have 1099s that total $48,000. And I had, to, I had to pay $750 every quarter for health insurance. So I put in 750 each quarter, and I would also get all those bills that I paid, no matter who you paid them to, um, and have them in the folder so you can use it for your forgiveness letter. So $3,000 in benefits that I paid. Now, if I had, if I was a, a, a business and um, I was paying out retirement uh, matching, um, and if I was paying state unemployment tax, I could add those items in here. And that's how I arrived at this $51,000, adding these three, adding these columns up, these two columns up. Now, if, um, it says not quite a hundred thousand dollars there, but it's supposed to be a hundred thousand. Um, if I was in the case of uh, Cindy and Jack, uh, for an example, if Cindy paid herself all the wages for their business and left Jack didn't get any uh, pay for the work that he does, I'm sure that's how it is right now. Um, <laughs> but um, Cindy would have put herself in jeopardy for this because what happens is you have to subtract the first hundred thousand from this. So say Cindy and Jack made a total of 200,000, but it was all paid to Cindy. Cindy would have to subtract 100,000 and she could only base this on $100,000 of wages. So I'm not sure that anybody on this call is in that space, but that's the danger of playing around in the taxes with, uh, with pay. But in this clear example, um, it's 51,000. This little calculator that she can send you will appropriately make averages if it's spelled correctly, which it's not. Um, $4,250 is the average uh, cost per month over the 12 months. And then this calculator takes it times two and a half percent, which gives you $10,625. And so I made this, I made this uh, 
schedule so that it would show you the difference between spending all the time and getting an SBA, a full SBA loan, and just taking the $10,000 in disaster loan, um, the EIDL, which is over here. So in this example, unless you could get this number above $51,000, the difference here is 625 bucks. You're gonna spend a couple hours pulling this information together to get to this. So you should just go ahead and just apply for the EIDL and get your 10 grand because you're only gonna get an extra 625 bucks for, for going through all the work and effort to go through a bank. And it could take you a week to get your banker to call you back and work you through the process. So that's kind of the break even point. And I built the chart for that to, to get you to that decision process. Um, but if this number over here, the 51,000 was significantly higher, this was 150,000. You're running a business, your total expenses are 150,000. And you divide that by 12 times two and a half, much different situation. Doesn't mean that you can't apply for both though. So if you have a business like that and this total payroll was 150,000, you could go ahead and get this and then you could apply for your bank for this. And what the bank's gonna do is they're gonna subtract the 10 grand from what they would give you the loan for over here. So say this was $38,000, they would subtract the 10 and give you a loan for $28,000. And then what will happen in the end is you want to be able to prove that the whole $38,000, 75% of that was used to pay employee or yourself um, those bills. And so that's what you want to be able to convey when you get this, when you write off the, uh, or when they, you get the forgiveness for this loan. So is this pretty clear to everybody, the spreadsheet? Cool. And I'll pass this without uh, grammatical errors over to Cindy uh, for you right away this evening. David, so that, can I ask you a question? Yes. I think I heard somewhere, and I'm just, when you were just doing that example, I just want to clarify. If, when they say the first, I had heard the first 25,000 is not collateralized. Is that, so like if you had done your example and it came out to 38,000, then the first 25,000 it, it said was not, is that what you've heard too? Okay, yes. So if you you can get this disaster loan up to $25,000, most people can't qualify for that. Um, this one is not collateralized at all, no matter what this number is. No okay. collateralization, no uh, personal guarantees. It's, a, it's like getting a signature loan at the bank back in the day where you would just go in and get the money and uh, you aren't on the hook for it. So this money, if you got more than $10,000, would be collateralized. If you got the $25,000 over here, that would be collateralized. That's why I'm encouraging people just to stick with this. This number, though, um, no matter what it is uh, right now, like I said, my significant other, um, their bank is doing hundred, two, three, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 over here. No collateralization, no, no uh, personal guarantee. But now they have to spend 75% of that on payroll or um, risk not getting it uh, waived. Uh, and some people are all right with it because it's only a 1% loan. So some businesses are just okay with it. And the other caveat, I don't think we have anybody on the line, but you can't reduce your workforce. So on this loan, if you say you have 21 employees, when you pay those eight weeks of wages at the end of eight weeks, you better have 21 employees on your books. Uh, if you don't, you haven't met the, the criteria to have it uh, forgiven. And so you will have to pay back a portion of the loan. And we still don't know exactly how the portionment's gonna be done, but um, so I'm encouraging people to spend it for what it was for to make sure that we, it's a safety net for our economy and to keep employees, um, keep money in their pockets so they can pay their bills. So that answer your question good, Cindy? I think so. I just want to ask you one more question. Like sure. as a small business owner, I have expenses and commitments that are not wages. So none of these really take that into an account. I mean, you have the thing about wages, taxes, payroll, that right. is one bucket, but then I have, you know, marketing and other things that are commitments. There's nothing really available to address that at this point. No. So the only thing you can do, say you say this number over here ended up being $55,000 over right. here. Right. You could spend $13,750 over those eight weeks, 25%, and you'd be in the clear. Okay. But that's it. I, I would even recommend only spending, like, I'm conservative, 22%, 23%, just so that 
if you want to get it forgiven, you know, uh, stay within the, in the rules, you know, um, but, uh, and you can always put off an expense, tell the, tell the, um, the marketer that, Hey, you'll, you'll pay him next month sure, <laughs> after this right. is done if you have to. But, um, so it's a really good thing. And I'm not, I'm not trying to encourage people to get a, a, a waiver on the loan, but, um, if you're going to meet the government standard, you have to be 25% or less. So it's almost like our income taxes where they, I mean, just in big picture, they raise the standard deduction to where a lot more people, that's just the easier, smarter thing to do. Yeah. And then there's people who really should itemize because it's a much more complicated, significant, bigger opportunity. So it sounds like for many of the people we know, um, this, this won't, I mean, it's really a, a very, uh, small amount. I mean, I mean, this 10,000 ish for most people is going to be the basic what they're going to see. Yeah. And if you don't um, believe that they want to give it away, I had a, a call from the Small Business Administration um, this afternoon. And the, um, the agent on the line said, can I get a list of all your members so we can send them an email about this program so they can get the 10, every one of them get the 10 grand. I'm like, is this real? I actually had, I had her read her badge number to me because I couldn't believe it was actually someone from the small business administration. So again, I think this $2 billion stimulus is going to end up being five. I think they're going to give away money until they make sure the economy, because there's nothing else left in the toolkit to prop up our economy. Interest rates are so low. Um, there's nothing else left other than giving money away. So um, I'll move along and then if you have any questions, um, this is just a snapshot of what the PPP application looks like. The other application I couldn't really cut, it's an online application. It was very difficult to cut each page because you can only get to the next page if you fill out the first page. So a little more difficult for me to get to, but it's a pretty simplistic application. This one is a little more complex. You have all the different business types and you have to be specific about your DBA, your legal name. And my understanding today from the Small Business Administration, if you operate your business under your name, like David Bennett, um, and you have a DBA, make sure you use David Bennett and that's it. You're gonna put that as your legal name, unless you have a legal name that's a PA or um, an incorporated name that you're gonna use, but most sole proprietors don't have incorporated names. Um, and then list the proper business identification number, whether if you operate your business under your 59 number, place that. But if you use your social security number as your business, make sure you place that because they're, they're going to look at those things uh, pretty tightly, the bank side of it. Remember, this is going to vet through the bank. Um, so um, this is this magic box right here. These three boxes right here. Um, if you're going to do the PPP loan, this is your average monthly payroll. So it's that number I helped you arrive at. Um, times the two and a half percent or two and a half times. And that's what the loan amount is going to be over here. And then they specifically want the number of employees and this needs to match any payroll records you have if you're going to do this type of loan. So if your 941 says you have three employees, um, you're going to put three there and the bank's going to verify that on your 941. And then at the end of this process to write a letter to get forgiveness, um, unless you rehire quickly, um, you better have three employees on your payroll or they are not gonna waive any of this loan. You'll, you'll owe the loan, it's a 10 year loan for 1%. Still not a bad idea um, if you wanna go that route. So this is just a snapshot. So again, 75% of the loan must be spent on payroll and the cost, that could be health insurance, retirement, um, the eight weeks following the loan receipt. So there was your question, Cindy, loan receipt. Thank you. So yeah. one question that I get a lot from our clients that own vacation rentals, I know you own a vacation rental. Can you talk about, um, you know, again, while they, you know, have some income from it, you know, again, just what are some of the different scenarios that you know that might or might not fit under this? Right now under the PPP, um, I don't think you would qualify unless you're really running a really strong vacation rental business. I have one unit. And I'm going to lose that money this year, most likely. Um, it's not a it's not um, a business that is a going concern for me. So I'm a W two wage earner. I'm a CEO for the organization. So this is passive income for me. Um, I don't think a bank's going to approve me getting it. Now I might get the ten grand um, on the EIDL, 
Um, but the bank is probably going to turn me down because it's passive income. Now, if I have 25 rental units and this is how I make my living, totally different situation. Um, and it wouldn't be considered as passive. Now, if I was, you know, I'm Mitt Romney and I got 25 units and I'm renting it, the bank's probably going to turn you down because Mitt, this is passive income to Mitt Romney. So it's probably not going to work. But if this is how you make your money and you're living, um, and it's a business. And even if you have, say you have a secretary that helps you out with that business, um, that all solidifies your case for the bank. Cause the bank's going to do the PPP. Remember the $10,000 through EIDL, you just apply online through EIDL and they drop the money in your account. You just have to prove to them you used it for payroll, uh, 75%. Okay. Does that work? Good. I think so. Yeah. Okay. So, so I do have clients that probably generate about two hundred thousand dollars in income, and so for them, it might there might be they take it through distribution. So again, they might need some more help and advice, but there might be a reason for them to go through that whole big process to maybe possibly offset. Absolutely, more. absolutely. And a and a banker, any savvy banker uh, that does SBA, uh, they'll be able to answer those really really hard questions about distribution and people that operate that type of business like an S-Corp and they take a distribution, um, a good banker will do that. And the bank's going to make a fee based on the size of the loan. So if it's a big loan, like 200000 like Cindy's saying, um, the banker's going to take that one before they take the little $18,000 PPP loan. So okay. um, it's all about the money. So these are uh, payroll costs. And I'll, like I said, I'll give these slides to Cindy. All of these things. So if you have your massage therapist, you know, I, I send it to my massage therapist. Um, these people are dying right now. They can't, they can't function. Um, so tips, um, anything that they make, um, all of these things are considered wages for independent contractors and um, sole proprietors. Um, and you can see I highlighted all the things, uh, vacation time, sick leave, employee benefits, retirement, um, cash and tips for all of those type of professions that are in that type of business. As long as they can just show what they made in 2019, and even if 2019 was a bang up year for a server at a restaurant and they made $50,000, they're working at, um, they're working at Capital Grill and they made $50,000, which is about what a server makes there. Um, they could go and get a loan based on two and a half times of that 50,000. So if you know someone, encourage them to do it. Maybe it will help them um, save their family home and help their family out. Um, independent contractors. So if you run a business, and you pay like Pinellas Realtor Organization, we have a janitorial service that they're not employees of PRO or Pinellas Realtor Organization. We pay them as an independent contractor. I can't include them. They have to go get their own loan to, to, to pay their bills. So if I stop paying our janitorial service for the month, that janitorial service as an independent contractor has to go and get their own uh, $10,000 of their own PPP loans, um, I cannot legally add that back because what it will do is it will cause me to lose my forgiveness of the loan. Because when I go to prove to the bank and to um, the um, um, business administration that I want forgiveness, if I included an independent contractor that they can't see on my 941s, they're going to say, eh, eh and they're not gonna like forgive my loan, they're gonna make me pay the loan back. So be careful about that if you have an independent contractor under your business. So Cindy mentioned that person that has $200,000 business with vacation rentals, the maids, all those things that they pay as independent contractors, don't include those in the PPP because you will end up with a loan, you won't get it forgiven. That was one thing we learned just recently. So that's a snapshot of what you can use and I lost my cursor here. So this would be great for bartenders that we know and hairdressers and all the like. Absolutely. Just, okay. Musicians yeah. are hurting right now. I know for sure. Yep. Absolutely. And um, I've personally been reaching out to just my sphere of influence with people um, that, that need to understand how this works now that I understand it um, because these people are hurting, you know, they're, they're, they're used to working on tips every day. And so they, they're hurting desperately. Um, this is uh, an excerpt right off the Small Business Administration loan website. Um, eight weeks of pay. Uh, that's what they're funding. And it's for fully forgiven if at least 75% is used for payroll. Um, there's loan deferments, so they're not, there's no payments during this period of time. 
of six months. Uh, and then no collateral, no personal guarantees are required. So that's, that's right off the SBA website. Uh, and then there's no fees. So if a bank says they're charging you a fee to do this PPP, go to another bank. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they're ripping you off because it says no fees. The bank is making their money from the Small Business Administration. Um, there's some caveats here. Uh, you got to maintain your salary levels, of course. So you can drop some, you can drop a $100,000 employee. You can drop their pay a little, but you can't drop anybody below that at all. Um, uh, with, so it won't be forgiven. Uh, no salary decreases or headcount decreases. So let me ask you a quick question, David. Sure. Say you were a small business person, like say it was my, um, my uh, manicure nail salon person. And say that they normally are coming up with their income is two thousand um, a month for twenty nineteen. Can they put in for the ten thousand and just then make sure they pay themselves like do it in distribution so they pay out eight you know pay out the eighty percent in the next two months or do they have to maintain the same amount that they were doing in twenty nineteen? Nope, they just have to get through that eight weeks. So if I got a check for ten thousand and I ended up paying myself at least four thousand, four thousand, um, and then two thousand, I could use for other business expenses, regardless of of if last year I only paid myself two thousand a month. Correct. So uh, in that example, ten thousand um, dollars, you'd have to pay out at least nine nine hundred thirty seven dollars and fifty cents over the eight weeks to get you to that seventy five hundred dollars, which is reasonable for someone. Trust me, nail tech, nail places make a lot of money. <laughs> so, um, but that's a great example. So if you know someone, um, you know, massage therapist, nail people, your person who cut your hair, this is, this can help save them. Now, let me just ask another clarifying question. So for people that are independent contractors, um, they could, they could take advantage of this and get the 10,000. But can they also, like the nail techs are closed down because they're not, you know, essential. So could they also do an unemployment if they are not, um, yeah. they're, they're sole proprietors, right? They're not yeah. a corporate structure. Yeah. So now they're going to, they're going to, if they go past the eight weeks, because unemployment's going to say, are you paid by any other entity? Oh, so right. they're going to have to use that money up first and then they can get, but unemployment now has been extended to 39 weeks. So the difference between 39 and eight is a huge thing if this goes on, drags on. Um, so great question though. And then one more question in that respect. So if you're a W-2 today mm -hmm. and you're a part of this, you're not gonna be in the unemployment piece of it. So for realtors that like myself do a W-2, <clears throat> even though the real estate business, if it were to tank, it couldn't do unemployment as well. Yeah, I don't think you can, I don't think you'd be able to go both sides. But if I was a typical realtor who didn't have a corporation, they're yeah. just a 1099, they could get this money and then they could get unemployment. Potentially, yeah. I think there's some little flaws. Remember, this thing was pulled up overnight. You know, it's the fastest <laughs> legislation we've ever done. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Margaret. Sure. I have a quick question as an independent contractor. So, during this time, you have to have proof that you are not earning any income. Is that correct? Um, not, not necessarily. Um, it's just maintaining, maintaining it is the important feature here. Um, it's stimulus. So your income may have dropped a little, just as long as you maintain it and pay yourself, um, you're going you're gonna to be in good shape. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Jason, do you have any questions? You can put them in chat too. Uh, no, th thank you for, for this. This is, uh, this is all great information. I, I've actually been speaking with my CPA already about some of this. So, um, okay, okay. this is all, uh, I've heard some of this already before. Uh, one thing he did tell me, um, uh, so I, I own a, a small tech company, um, primarily service driven, uh, service and hour driven. Um, and if our revenue drop below, he said basically a 50% threshold. Um, that's kind of the trigger to where we would be able to 
um, I guess, be eligible for some of these additional um, loans. Have you heard anything about that? Does that sound accurate or? Yeah, so the only thing that I, I'm understanding, um, they're not really driven by the revenue, they're driven by keeping people employed and paying them. So um, right. there, there's a particular company right now that their revenue um, only went down a very small amount because they're, a, like you said, they're a technology company that's still going on. Mm -hmm. It just shored up their their um, payroll for, for a period of time. So there's not really, um, I don't think there's a whole lot of caveats. Now, there are some caveats about the type of business you operate, how much your revenue is. So if you had, I can't remember the example um, that the SBA gave me, but I think if you're like a construction company, if your construction company is does more than $30 million of the business, which is pretty easy. I mean, you build a few office buildings and you're 30 million bucks worth of company. They'll only let you get a PPP loan if you're less than $30 million as a contracting company based on your SIC code that you put in the loan uh, document. So, but there's a whole list of, they have a, a, a threshold of revenue for every single SIC code, but it doesn't say how much, it's not saying how much your loss of revenue is, it's just what your top line revenue was for that particular year. So um, gotcha. my, my understanding right now is that even if you only dropped a 3% drop in your revenue, as long as you're promised to keep paying those employees and won't lay them off, that's what government is trying to prevent you from laying right. people off. Because lots of people are laying people off, even though their company revenue stream is still going on, because they just want to they want to save more money so that they can sure themselves up. Um, right. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it, like uh, my tech company, it's basically would have a, a month, one month lag. You know, obviously, mm -hmm. very essential services is for our customers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, as things settle down and people get accustomed to remote working, then yeah. Yeah. April likely will have some revenue impact. To the point where we may need to lay people off in May or June. Yeah, yeah. Um, if or depending how long it drags out. So, and, and I, I think, think this is going to get extended. I think where they're going to have to go back and get some more money because this money is going to get sucked up pretty pretty quick. Mm. So is that the other advice that to go ahead and apply quickly before the money's gone? Because I've heard some people say once the money's gone, then it's gone. I mean, and again, we might, they might get more, but it, yeah. if you know that you qualify, you should be filling it out now, right? Yeah. If you have all your records together and in great shape, all your 941s, a financial statement, you have all of it. If your banker will give you five minutes, go and get it. Because I, I hear that the, um, um, we were just on the line with our governmental affairs people, and I hear that the next stimulus package is only seven pages. And there's never been anything in the United States Congress that's only been seven pages <laughs> in my whole life. And so, you know, they mean business when it's only seven pages. So I think there's going to be more money. Um, but if you have all your paperwork together, and this is where people are getting in trouble, they don't have all their information together. Uh, but if you can get your 941s and all your copies of when you were incorporated, you can get that off SunBiz, get it all together and um, these loan officers want it because they're not writing, uh, they're not like writing loan business right now because that's, that's too scary right now for banks, but they're, um, these loan officers are hungry for this PPP loans because at least they're, they're busy and they're keeping their bank customers happy, which keep their jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we'll so pay it back is what my CPA said. So what's what that again? Jason? Worst case, you just pay it back if you don't need it. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. a, it's Absolutely. a penalty free to pay it back. So no harm as long as you pay it back in the, what yeah. is it? Um, six months. And then it's 1% right. if got, you go. got right. six months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you'll, you'll, we'll all know in six months. I hope it's not six months. I'm not sure I can work at home for six months. I have a dog that's just drives me crazy because she's not used to people being at home all day long. <laughs> so, I don't think society could handle a six months <laughs> stay at home. Absolutely. It, but, it, um, something bad would really happen. I hope I conveyed some information that uh, is of value to you. And uh, I appreciate it, Cindy, giving me the opportunity to, to uh, give this little spiel again and, and just create some value for your customers, Cindy. Yes. And I think, uh, Margaret, you had something you wanted to share just Please. real briefly before we got off. 
Absolutely. So I actually work contract with a company that does outplacement services. <clears throat> Very good. Excuse me. It's called Newland-Associates.com. And we are providing <clears throat> three webinars each week that are free for anybody in the state of Florida that's been unemployed. And so, um, so there are two, if you go to newland-associates.com, that's N-E-W-L-A-N-D-associates.com, you'll see the link there for the COVID help. And we're, we're covering um, those, the stress, budgets, we're talking um, resumes, and we're talking um, online applications and interviewing. So they'll, that will be starting next week on Tuesday, um, April 14th. This goes every week through at right now until the end of May. It's totally free for anybody throughout the state of Florida that's been laid off. So just wanted to share that. Oh, very nice. Thank you. Good. And maybe we can, you know, get back together and record something to promote that because, you know, we even know people in my space whose spouses, you know, were laid off temporarily and, and different things. So it touches us more places than we would know. So thank you for that, Margaret. And um, Margaret Martin is a good friend of mine and has been a, a mentor and an asset in helping me with resume and uh, different things as well as my son. So she's very gifted in that and it, that's a great resource for people to know they're getting really experienced help with that. So thank you. Um, well, I think we're going to wrap it up now. And um, again, we will have a recording and a link to this. And for anybody that couldn't make it, you know, again, we'll share it. And David, uh, thank you for your diligence in getting on this and learning it and then being willing to come and share it for people that we know that might be affected. Uh, again, if you've got questions or things going on, not just about this, uh, let me know. We have a lot of resources. Uh, one of the things that we may come to you next are questions I'm getting about what is forbearance, how does that work, what are the pros and cons, because again, sometimes we watch the news and you hear uh, everything is just don't pay your mortgage or, you know, tenants don't have to pay, you know, we're not evicting. And again, uh, as we learned in 2008, a lot of people made poor decisions based on poor information. And so we just want to make sure people have good information so in their personal situation, they can make good decisions and, uh, and so again, Jack and I are happy to be, uh, again, you know, more than realtors, but you know, your community member and neighbor wanting to make sure we have strong communities and whatever we can do to help. So thank you all so much. I'm gonna wrap this up and have a great night. Thank, thank you, David. And You're very welcome.